Hi, I'm Supervisor Nick D'Alessandro. I'm here to discuss with you the permissive referendum that is coming on the November 5th ballot. On Tuesday, November 5th, Election Day, on the reverse side of the ballot, you will see a proposition. And the proposition will read exactly like this. Shall Local Law H of 2019 establishing a road paving capital reserve fund with a minimum of $1.3 million annually and establishing a road paving selection program and authorizi authorizing the exceedance of the tax cap in 2019 be approved? I will be sending out a mailer that looks exactly like this. On one side, it has information about what will be with the paving program and on the other side shows you the exact proposition and on the top will have your address. So please be on the lookout for this. It will be mailed to all the residents of East Fishgale. I wanted to today to discuss with you what this is really all about. We are going to have a permissive referendum. And what is that? A permissive referendum is a powerful tool that government could use for its citizens to directly participate in our decision making that will affect their lives. Why do we do it this way? Because the voters will be limiting the powers of the town board. By New York state law, the government, the town board, has the right of the purse. We are the ones to spend your tax dollars. And when we are talking about limiting our powers, the only people that can do that is you, the citizens, the voters. So we want to make sure that the dollars that are going to be funding this referendum will always remain in that fund. No town board now or no town board in the future could ever take those dollars and use them for something else. Many times in the past, other, other town boards, they have took, taken dollars from paving or from snow plowing to pay for other items that we need. Now that I am supervisor, I see it's a difficult job to juggle how the tax dollars are spent, especially when we have recessions and other things like that going on. Well, this would prohibit that. Those dollars will be kept in a capital reserve fund solely for paving. So in 30 years, those dollars will still be used to pave our town roads, which is a critical and important step. I want to show you this chart right here just to go through a few points. <clears throat> the establishing the road paving reserve fund. It will establish a road paving capital reserve that must be funded annually with at least $1.3 million. It is intended that the $1.3 million be in addition to whatever is appropriated through the operating budget, which is currently $700,000. Our goal for this was to make sure that this paving budget line item will have a minimum of $2 million in it. So the additional 1.3 will be generated from this new fund and the, the current amount of 700,000 to be added to that. With that, we can pave an adequate amount of roads. Not the amount that is really needed to bring us up to speed, but it's a start. We need to start to get back to where we have a good feeling about our town roads. The additional 1.3 million of funding would be in excess of the tax cap. The full annual paving budget will be allocated to specific roads by the town engineer. This list would be commented on by the highway superintendent and then ultimately would be approved by the town board. The first year of paving, the first year paving budget is expected to be $2 million. The intention would be to grow the paving budget in the future years as much as possible within the limits of the cap. This local law is to be voted on by the people of, the e of East Fishkill on November 5th ballot. In this second chart, the annual paving miles shows what we should be paving every year. We should be paving about 11 miles of town road every year. This is so that we can every 20 years repave the entire town. Right now, we are paving a little over two miles of a year. 
With our current budget of $800,000, that's $700,000 for paving and $100,000 for uh, drainage, this is all we can really afford right now to pave. And this is with the additional $1.3 million if the referendum passes. This will increase us to about seven miles, a little over seven miles a year of paving. It doesn't get us to where we should be, but it gives us a good start. And hopefully with the town board making other cuts as we do every year to increase that paving budget every year. In previous years, when we've had smaller and easier winters, we've utilized those savings to pave more. And that would also continue. And our second chart, local road miles in Dutchess County. As, as you can see, East Fishkill has the most miles of town road than any other town in Dutchess County. We have 219 miles of town road. The closest second to us is the town of Poughkeepsie. They have 139 miles of town road. So it, it, you can see how large our town really is. So as you can see, Poughkeepsie has the second largest amount of town roads. The Cornell Local Roads Program, every two years, they come out with this report. And this report grades all our roads in every single municipality in Dutchess County. There's 30 municipalities in Dutchess County. And by their um, CPI comparison of how they rate all the roads, East Fishkill is ranked 24th out of 30 towns. That's how far down we are. And they do the grading based upon a whole different series of analysis. Uh, they are very thorough, and this is, a, this is a tool that Dutchess County uses and that we use as well. Dutchess County actually has 330, no, I'm sorry, 393 miles of road, and we have 219 miles of road. So we have almost as much t roads as Dutchess County does. In our next chart, the tax rate comparison. It shows you all the municipalities in Dutchess County and two in Putnam County that compare to East Fishkill. These are comparable towns because all these towns offer the same services that we do, like a full-time police department. East Fishkill, as you can see, has the lowest tax rate than any of the comparable towns. East Fishkill Town Board is a wonderful steward of our tax dollars. As you can see, we try to cut as much as we can, as fast as we can, as often as we can. So when we say that we want these tax dollars to go into this capital reserve fund so no other town board can touch it, it will increase the tax rate. And how much it will? It will increase it from 3.27 is the proposed tax rate for 2020. It will go to 3.59 if the voters approve this referendum. And as you can see, on an average home of $300,000, that would increase your taxes from $981 to $1,077. It was a difficult decision for the town board to decide how much to ask for this referendum. We couldn't ask too little because it wouldn't make enough impact on the roads and we couldn't ask for too much because it is the town residents dollars and we have to be cognizant that some residents can't afford that. So we try to be in the middle and ask for that. As you can see these other towns are much higher than ours uh, a comparable town with the amount of roads that East Fishkill has is the town of Kent. They have over 200 miles of town road as well, and, but their tax rate is more than double ours. So the amount of services that you get for your tax dollars is much higher in East Fishkill than surrounding municipalities. Some residents have discussed bonding for this proposal instead of a tax increase. Well, bonding is not a very good idea, our financial advisors tell us. Sometimes the bond, the life of the bond, is longer than the life of the road. And we have to pay interest on top of the bond. 
This is a loan, just like you borrow for your house. A bond is just borrowing money and paying it over time. If we have this be approved by the town voters, then we can pay as we go. But it wouldn't exclude us from bonding. If there is a catastrophe or a war and we know that the price of oil is going to increase, the town board can act quickly and borrow money to do a quick amount of paving, a large amount of paving quickly. So we have the ability to bond if we want to, but bonding is never a good idea for a long-term solution. This town board is very financially conservative and we try to stretch the dollars as best we can. If you are a true fi a conservative financially, you'll know that spending the money now will save you much, much more money later. I, don't, I can't stress how important it is and what a dire situation this will become. The longer we wait and kick the can down the road for our roads, it will only cost the taxpayers much more later. New York State considers town roads a town's assets. And by state law, we have to make sure we maintain those roads. Otherwise, that could affect funding that we receive in forms of chip dollars. And chip dollars are the amount that they give you back for paving. They do give only a small percentage back every year, but they do return some money to us for maintaining the roads. So it is very important that we make sure that we're responsible and we fix the roads when we can and as quickly as we can. Not only do we have an obligation to maintain our roads, but also the condition of the roads ties into many other factors. Liability. If the town roads are degraded to a point of they can't fix them and we have to rebuild it and it causes accidents, the town has a liability there. And we have to make sure that the town has as little liability as possible. Also, real estate values. Your roads are clearly connected to your real estate values. Many real estate agents have said to me that the conditions of the road sometimes help or not help the sale of a home. So keep that in mind, please, when if you don't live on out on a town road, you might perhaps live on a state road, like myself. I live on a state road. I would not benefit from this, but I know that my tax dollars will ultimately increase the value of my home and everyone else's. A couple of points I wanted to make with the budgeting process. So this year I have come up with two town budgets. One town budget which is under the cap and one town budget which includes this paving initiative which is over the tax cap. If the voters vote yes on November 5th that will break the tax cap and the increase is shown what it will be will go from 3.27 to 3.59 the tax cap. But this is only a one year tax cap break. We don't have to break the tax cap in future years. Um, sometimes the cap, people have mentioned that if we break the tax cap that you will not receive a star rebate. That is no longer true. We have not received a star rebate from New York State since 2017. The rebate you get now is linked directly to the school board taxes. If the school board does not break the tax cap, then we do receive a rebate check from the state, but not from the town. I'm happy to be here to discuss this with you today. I wanted to give as much information as possible. When you come into Town Hall, there are packets available of all this information. And if you need any questions or concerns answers, please call my office at 221-4303. And please look out for the postcard coming in the mail with information on it so you can read. And again, if you need to contact me, please do so at 221-4303. Thank you very much. So here we are out on Brown Road. Everybody knows we're repaving Brown Road this year. We're here with the town engineer, Scott Bryant. Scott, how are you? Hey, how are you doing, Supervisor? Good. Can you give us a little description of what's going on here? Yes, absolutely. So Brown Road is about a mile long. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the pre at this point, but what I can share with you is what we've done to date. This, if you look at the, the surface here, this is a reclaimed cold recycling uh, product. This was the original asphalt 
that was uh, basically chewed up with like a giant rototiller, laid back in place with an emulsion added to it. It saved trucking all this material out and replacing all this material. Uh, we added some larger stone to uh, change it from like a top coarse uh, gradation to a binder coarse gradation, make it a little stronger. Uh, and then at this point, you can see on this other lane is a two inch uh, top coarse uh, that we overlay the uh, recycle surface with. Uh, what this does, it, it helps uh, minimize the uh, elevation rise in the road. So when we do our transitions to the driveways and side roads, we don't have to cut back as far. It also helps uh, minimize, you know, problems that are uh, created with drainage by raising the road. But this is a very cost effective way of uh, reclaiming a road uh, without having to truck all this material out, truck all this material in. Uh, in the old days, we might just put three inches of binder and two inches of top on top of the existing road. And, you know, at, at times that alligating and all that deflection in the existing surface would, would you know, make its way to the, to the top. But this uh, chews up all those cracks, gives us a nice solid base to, uh, to work from. And then you can see over here uh, the final product to the right. And uh, you know, we'll take a walk up and take a look at the paving operation. So you can see here the, the black asphalt. This is the original asphalt that's been uh, recycled with a little bit of emulsion added to it. And you can see these lighter color stones here. These are the three quarter stone, the larger stones that we added to the mix and blended in to uh, make this course stronger. So again, we're on Brown Road. What I have in the background here is one of our paving uh, contractors. They're using a track-mounted uh, paver, putting down the uh, top wearing course. In front of that is, is a flow boy that hauls about uh, 38 ton of asphalt. The nice thing about the flow boys is they don't have to tip up, don't have to worry about hitting the overhead wires and the branches and such. Uh, I know they don't use flow boys exclusively, but uh, they can juggle the flow boy with the regular 10 wheeler when they have wires overhead. So that's a nice feature uh, this contractor has. Uh, but anyway, you can see this is our second pass on this road. Uh, on the back side over here, you can see the, the roller train. One is called a knockdown roller in the front with the two lights on top. He first pinches the joint. As you can see here, they catch about six inches of it, pinch the joint and he works his way across the mat. That's the knockdown roller. And then there's a final roller all the way in the back that gives us our final compaction. In the middle, you see a small roller. They're doing the driveways as we come through. This is our highway department tying in all the driveways as we come through. And rather than us sending our trucks for asphalt, we just piggyback the contractor's trucks and uh, they open up the, the side gate, give us a little extra blacktop, and uh, we're able to do this as we come along, one nice, neat uh, operation. Absolutely. So this particular road is a road that was paved about 10 years ago. Uh, as you can see, it looks like it's in fairly decent shape on our uh, Cornell uh, Cooperative uh, study. It rates uh, 92. I think that's based in 2016 or 17. It rated a 92. Even at a 92, you can see some travers cracking here. Uh, not a substantial issue. The, you know, the road is still in, in really good shape. It probably should have a seal coating. And I think as part of uh, this referendum, if it gets approved, we will assess these roads that are not only in really bad shape, but roads that have been done, say, 10 years ago, like this road. And maybe we can do some preventive maintenance, some seal coating, uh, some fiber mat coating to help preserve the life of, of a road, that, which today is in pretty good shape. And, and we don't want to replace it like we're doing out in Brown Road. 
we, you know, we want to try to preserve this road as long as we can. So this is a road again, it, it ranks a 92. You can still see some cracking, but, it, but it's still a very passable road and in pretty good shape. And uh, this is a road that we should look to preserve as long as we can. So we're on a road here that ranks pretty low on our scale. I think it ranks a, a 32. Uh, it's a little bit deceiving. If you look right here, you, you would say, oh, this road looks in pretty good condition. You know, what, what's the problem? But if we just take a few steps uh, forward, you can start to see alligating cracking here, extensive alligating cracking, uh, to the point where it's, it's actually starting to fail here. As we continue, you can see uh, the same pattern of alligator cracking, and you can see where a course of asphalt had been placed on top of that, the first course, but those same cracks, as you can see, just come through the, the overlay, and you still have the same uh, cracking defect, which peels off over time. And as we continue to walk just another short distance, what ultimately happens is we have no road at all. And now we have a complete failure uh, the, you know, the, the road is gone, complete reconstruction. And this is, again, we have, you know, many roads like this in the town that are beyond uh, disrepair and that hopefully this resolution goes through that we can start addressing uh, the, these roads. Okay. I want to add something. Now this road, okay, you asked the question, how would we uh, repair this road? Well, we were just over on Brown Road and I explained the cold mill recycling, which basically chews up the road uh, and relays it. Uh, this, these streets are a good candidate for that process. One difficulty is it's a rather uh, long equipment train uh, that, that is required, and uh, this road has a lot of turns and bends. We'd have to bring the contractor over here and, and, and make sure it can be done. But from a physical standpoint, this is an ideal candidate to do that type of repair. It's just a matter of uh, can we get the equipment in here uh, with all the tight turns and bends on this street. Uh, but that would be the right way to approach this, this street. Okay, so this particular road uh, is basically a typical road in East Fishkill. Uh, the score on this road is a, is a 62. Our town-wide average, I think, is about a 65, 66. So this is pretty close to, a, to an average road in the town. And as you can see, it, it is very distressed. Uh, there's alligator cracking here in some areas. Uh, we have a little failure and you can see some patching potholes in, in this area over here. Uh, as, as we circled back around, more alligator cracking. Um, on the far end you can see patching of potholes and, and really some more substantial failure going on on the far end. And, and this is basically a, you know, a, a typical road in East Fishkill. Uh, this is a cul-de-sac here that we're looking at, but if you look down the road itself, you know, the right side lane looks in halfway decent shape. The left side, not, not so much in poor shape. Further down the road is more, is more uh, potholing and, and patching. Uh, we can't just do one lane and not the other. We would do the whole road. This road, uh, not quite sure if this is a candidate for the cold mill recycling. May or may not be. Uh, we may do some partial box out and find a repair and then, and then top coat it. We'd have to look, take a little closer look at it. This is not on our immediate uh, cycle for, for a repair at this point, but we're here just to illustrate what you know a fairly average road in East Fishkill looks like and, and the poor condition that it's in and, and the need for additional funds to make uh, repairs before, as, as I can show you over here, it, it's just starting to fail. I mean, that's that's where we're heading in this road in another five years. If we don't do something with it, it it's going to get to the point where it's going to need full uh, full reclamation, full full reconstruction. Well, thank you, Scott, for taking us out and showing us what the roads in East Fishkill really look like. I hope this helped.
I hope the people at home see what we're facing and uh, how we try to fix whatever we can with to stretch your tax dollars as best we can as well. So thank you, and I hope that if you have any questions, please call my office, 221-4303, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.